Our last speaker of the morning is uh, Dr. Deepti Warad, who is Senior Associate Consultant in Pediatric Hematology and in Laboratory Medicine. She joined our faculty after completing our Special Coag Lab Fellowship, and we also have a clinical fellowship. Uh, she's going to inform us about pediatric coagulation testing issues. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nichols. So uh, I'd like to be, uh, begin to say that um, there are no algorithms specifically to pediatrics. What we follow is usually the adult-based algorithms that have been developed and have been described so nicely uh, by all the presenters before me. So I'd like to highlight the challenges that we face in pediatric coagulation testing because this is important, especially um, in laboratories and clinical setting, and not to forget that uh, we might misdiagnose many uh, children just based on the lab results. So um, I have no disclosures. Um, so the objectives of my talk are to recognize the role of physiologic changes in hemostatic factors uh, during uh, development, to identify age-related differences in coagulation parameters, and to recognize the variation that might occur in normal ranges in different laboratories with use of different techniques. So what are the variables that are inherent to pediatric um, coagulation testing? Importantly, obviously, um, the age-related differences as uh, a child develops, uh, the sex-related changes, and possibly uh, racial differences. Pre-analytical factors um, are probably more in children than adults, uh, especially with sample acquisition, as uh, you might um, guess. You know, drawing blood from a child is never a fun activity. And um, analy analytical factors um, inherent to laboratories, the reagents that are used, the platforms that are used, and the reporting units might vary uh, with different laboratories. So uh, developmental hemostasis, you might be familiar with this term. Uh, this was first coined in the late 1980s by Dr. Maureen Andrew, um, who uh, published uh, three landmark papers in the late 1980s um, using a single large cohort of Canadian children, um, 137 healthy preterm, 118 healthy term babies, and 163 children between age 1 and uh, 16 were recruited for the study, and they were able to study a majority of the coagulation proteins as measured by functional assays, and they were able to establish reference ranges for these populations and were able to show that they varied significantly in an age-dependent manner. So the procoagulant factors, um, the vitamin K-dependent factors, and the contact factors are all extremely low uh, at birth, and they rapidly increase in the first few weeks of life, and by about six months of age, they overlap substantially uh, with the adult ranges. However, the average values remained about 20% low until the teenage years. Prothrombin uh, especially was decreased about 20% throughout childhood. A significantly, uh, factor uh, five, factor eight, factor 13, fibrinogen, and von Willebrand factor were noted to be higher than the adult uh, values at birth. Von Willebrand factor was noted to be uh, elevated until about three months of age, suggesting that possibly von Willebrand factor was, was not just an acute phase reactant uh, perinatally, but it was also, it, it might also play a, 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 a undefined role in development of the babies. Coagulation inhibitors, uh, anithrombin and heparin cofactor 2, also uh, were noted to be about 50% of the adult values, and they also increase um, gradually uh, to reach about uh, at about three months of age into the adult range. Protein C and protein S were even lower at birth. Protein C remains markedly low until, uh, throughout the childhood, even up to age 16. Uh, alpha to macroglobulin, which um, it does not play a significant role in adult hemostasis, but in pediatrics, uh, it's found to be elevated at birth and uh, twice uh, the adult values, even at about six months of age, and continue to be increased in until up to the age 20s. Uh, 
uh, fibrinolytic uh, factors also uh, are different. Uh, plasminogen and alpha-2 antiplasmin are similar to adults uh, by about one year of age and remain uh, so. The tissue plasminogen activator uh, is lower in children and plasminogen activator inhibitor are elevated in children. So do we adapt all these ranges to uh, all laboratories universally? Um, as we know from uh, all the uh, literature that has come out since 1980s, that that is not true. One of the important uh, studies that was uh, published in 2006 by Dr. Monagol's group uh, looked at 400 healthy children from uh, age one month to 16 years, um, and uh, 159 neonates were also uh, recruited. Uh, more than 800 mothers were approached and only 159 consented, which again highlights another problem in establishing reference ranges in pediatric um, age groups. They uh, recruited um, a multiple uh, mix of racial backgrounds in the, uh, of the Australian children uh, and divided them into defined age groups uh, to establish those ranges and compared them to the adults. At least 20 samples were tested in each age range. So this table um, highlights the uh, differences in the uh, analyzing platform and reagents. So the blue is uh, the Australian study by Dr. Monagos group, and the orange color is uh, Dr. Andrews' previous published study from the Canadian group. Uh, the, the Australian study was basically the uh, Stago compact analyzer was used, and uh, the previous study was the ACL-based testing. Uh, so ACL-based testing is um, a, a light detection, a laser light detection-based uh, assay, while the, uh, the Stago compact analyzer is the mechanical metal ball um, detection. And uh, notably, they uh, analyzed PTT assay with four different reagents. So again, keeping the same color theme, um, looking at the different screening assays and fibrinogen. Uh, so, sorry. Um, APTT uh, assays, now again, significantly different from previously dis, uh, published uh, studies. The APTT was noted to be um, prolonged compared to the adults throughout the entire childhood uh, age groups. Uh, whereas uh, this was not seen in the Canadian study, it was only seen in the neonates. Um, PT was also different. In the um, Australian study, it was again elevated compared to the adults except in one age category, whereas in the uh, Canadian study, it was uh, not different even from the neonatal age group. And there were some differences noted in INR as well. Fibrinogen. Uh, there wasn't much difference except in the one month to one year and one year to five year age group. Uh, they were otherwise same in all age groups. So um, although we see that there are differences in the screening assay values reported, there were similarities to the Canadian study. Uh, just, uh, just as previously published, the vitamin K dependent factors were lower than the adult age and remained low throughout childhood. However, they proportionately increase as the child uh, grows through, um, through development. Factor eight was uh, elevated at birth. However, they noticed a trend where uh, there is a nadir at about age one month to one year, and then gradually increase above adult, uh, above to adult values. Um, the differences that were noted from previously published studies, the factor 12 uh, levels remained low throughout childhood. This was not noted in the Canadian study. And two dif uh, the, the other data that they studied in this uh, uh, report, which was not studied in the Canadian study, were D-dimers. D-dimers were noted to be markedly elevated in newborns and remain elevated throughout childhood. Uh, tissue factor pathway inhibitor and the endogenous thrombin potential were significantly lower in children. So now coming to the coagulation inhibitors, um, looking at the antithrombin levels, antithrombin were noted to be low in the neonatal age group. However, in the Australian study, they were elevated 
uh, compared to the adults, whereas this was not seen in the uh, uh, Canadian study. There was no difference in protein C, uh, chromogenic and clot-based assay values. Protein S, again, similar to anithrombin, were low, uh, similarly in both studies, whereas elevated in the Australian group and not seen in the Canadian group. So in conclusion, they, uh, they commented that, yes, there were differences, probably mainly due to the differences in reagents and the analyzers used. However, the physiologic principle of developmental hemostasis was reconfirmed. And age-related um, reference ranges should be uh, determined for each uh, reagent analyzer combination. More studies are definitely needed in the less than one year age group especially, and they commented of possible differences due to racial uh, composition between the Canadian group versus Australian group, and this has also been described in other publications. So this is just a table that sort of summarizes other studies that have come out trying to establish different re reference ranges in, um, uh, in pediatric population. But um, again, if you look at the numbers that are um, used to establish those ranges are pretty small in each age group, which is another um, uh, difficulty in establishing reference ranges using huge numbers in each age range in pediatric population. So um, the other problem with pediatric uh, population is the physiologic relevance of each assay. Does it give us the same meaning which uh, it gives in the adult population? The classic example of this is the anti-10A assay. Uh, anti-10A assay comes in two different, uh, broadly two different um, uh, uh, kits. Is one is the antithrombin supplemented anti-10A assay, whereas one uh, the other type is the uh, Anithrombin, uh, where you do not have to supplement anithrombin, and uh, these are used to measure the heparin anticoagulation effect. So one of the studies, again coming from the Australian group by Dr. Monagal, looked at four different anitene kits and one anti-2A. Um, they immune depleted the test plasma of anithrombin, and purified anithrombin was added at six different concentrations. To these uh, samples, heparin was added at three different concentrations to look for the heparin anticoagulation effect. So when measured, uh, when the heparin is added, heparin concentrations were dependent on the plasma concentrations of antithrombin. And when heparin was not an added, anticoagulation activity was detected only at plasma antithrombin of one unit ml or above. Significant correlation was noted between plasma and anthrombin concentrations and the amount of anticoagulant activity, which highlights the problem with um, this using these assays in pediatrics where uh, inherently anthrombin's levels might be physiologically low and the value that you determine by getting the anitinia levels may not uh, adequately reflect the anticoagulation effect. Um, the other problem is also, is there correlation between assays? Um, again, another uh, example is the APTT and anti-10A assay. When you use uh, to determine, uh, again, heparin anticoagulation, there are multiple studies showing that the correlation between APTT and anti-10A levels while measuring heparin uh, anticoagulation in pediatric population is not great. Um, and APTT by itself can be overly sensitive to heparin and may... Um, uh, and will and may might be an unreliable measure to measure the heparin anticoagulation, and uh, this is again age dependent. So, what are the challenges? And I've I've highlighted a few already. So there are ethical difficulties in drawing uh, blood from healthy children. Parents are not very thrilled to have their children being uh, poked for no other reason. However, you know, uh, you, we have to take a lot of efforts to uh, establish normal ranges. Controlling pre-analytical variables, um, yes, we cannot draw a lot of blood from pediatrics, therefore we can only draw small volumes. Babies especially tend to have high hematocrits, and um, as this has been described before, that can spuriously elevate your clot-based assay values. 
the cost involved involved with uh, establishing normal ranges in pediatric population it's it's quite high it's time consuming it's labor intensive and therefore many laboratories actually do not go through the effort of uh, establishing their own pediatric uh, reference ranges the problem is compounded by the advent of new analyzers and reagents increasingly increasingly into the market which have not been validated or studied in pediatric uh, population so um, in 2012 the isth ssc perinatal and pediatric hemostasis subcommittee came up with recommendations these are not evidence based but um M mainly expert opinion however from all the evidence that has been um, uh, published so far uh, they recommend that each laboratory should generate their own age analyzer and reagent appropriate reference ranges to use the tests and reagents that are as far as possible physiologically re relevant such as using antitene assay with without the anithromin supplementation use use uh, standard age groups so that there is inter laboratory comparison uh, if they are unable to generate their own reference ranges laboratories should use the published uh, ranges for their analyzer reagent combination if available if they are not available then they should consider referring these samples to laboratories which have their own uh, pediatric reference ranges so in summary children are not mini adults um the hemostatic uh, system evolves with developmental stages um children have physiologically lower procoagulant and anticoagulant factors however they are in a balance um an out of range value which may not be essentially abnormal may actually be physiologic and the child might actually be normal otherwise uh the assay reagent and analyzer variation should be considered by clinicians while interpreting these lab results and all diagnostic uh, laboratories should make the effort of generating their own uh, pediatric reference ranges so that is my talk and uh, i'm open for questions thank you who has a question about pediatric testing Yes, ma'am. Here's a uh, for Dr. Prathi. Not not pediatric test. Yeah, uh, sorry. It's uh, why didn't you have prothrombin gene defect or um, the plasminogen activator inhibitor in your profile? So the question was, why don't we have prothrombin gene mutation? Uh, we actually do. Uh, I just didn't. Sh it was on the first one of the slides. Um, Pi one, we don't have that as part of our routine profile. Um, I'm unsure of its role in uh, actually being a risk factor for venous thrombosis. Questions for Dr. Warhead. I'm going to offer one to her. I just told. You. Would you go? Or I'll, just, I'll go. Look. I was going to ask Dr. Warad with the recommendations that every lab should have its pediatric reference range. What is it at Mayo Clinic? <laughs> well, currently I am uh, working on a retrospective study trying to look for all the pediatric samples that we have tested to correlate with the previously published uh, ranges and and to again validate our own ranges and the prospective study is in coming. So we're working on it, but it's very challenging to do this uh, for laboratories. Any other questions? Thank you very much for your participation.